So um, let me show you the, um, the, the utility of Ampere's law by um, using it. So, because, uh, you know, with the, the loop of current, I looked at the formula because I knew derivation is tedious. You have to go through integral, it's tedious. But in this question, where it's a qu question relates to um, the magnetic field from a long, thin, straight wire, especially the long and straight part, allows me to treat this as an infinite uh, line of current. So in an arrangement where I have an infinite line of current, this is the kind of setup in which there's enough symmetry for me to use Ampere's law to drive magnetic field using it. So the, here are the main, two main symmetries you have are, um, you have rotational symmetry uh, that might be obvious to some people that if you have a long line of current then you can kind of rotate um, with that, rotate around that wire as an axis. So if you rotate this way, you are not really changing anything. So you have that rotational symmetry. And the second symmetry, uh, which people might not come to appreciate until using it in Ampere's law, it's the translational symmetry. You can translate this uh, in um, along the direction of the wire any amount and nothing will change. And that only happens with the infinitely long wire. If it's a finite, you know, it comes to some length and then turns and goes away, then you don't have that symmetry. So both of these symmetries allows you to do, um, simplify this setup enough that in the Ampere's law, which says the closed line integral of b dot dl. Um, again, I have this version memorized with, memorized with the magnetic constant. So the version with the magnetic constant is mu naught times i and closed in this uh, loop. Um, and uh, using this uh, correspondence between mu naught and uh, Coulomb constant and speed of light, I can rewrite this as 4 pi ke over c squared times I enclosed. So um, just like with the Gauss's law, Ampere's law is always true. It's a fundamental law of nature. It's never not true. But it's only useful in driving the actual value of the magnetic field when, when there's enough symmetry that you can make a certain simplifications. So here, um, so it's uh, one of the things that's a prerequisite to using Ampere's law is a, a basic intuitive sense of what the direction of the magnetic field is. That's where the one of the shortcut right-hand rule is useful. Uh, the one that uh, that gives you the direction of the magnetic field if you let your thumb go in the direction of current. So I orient my right hand so that my thumb goes uh, upward. Then the current goes in such a way that on the... Um, on the right side of the wire, the current is going into the screen. Let me just diagram that. On the right side, the current is going into the screen. And then on the left side, the current is coming out of the screen uh, from your perspective. And let me just double check with my perspective. Screen. Okay, <laughs> the same right hand works. It's the kind of beauty of the right hand rule. As long as I'm not looking into a mirror, it actually works fine. So this is going to be the direction of magnetic field uh, generally. And what both of these symmetries tell you is that this, uh, let me just select it, this can be replicated um, just along this uh, wire. Um, because of translational symmetry, um, the kind of strength of magnetic field here is exactly the same here. And because of rotational symmetry, all the, all the way around this circle, the strength of magnetic field will be the same. So um, if we are trying to find magnetic field at some distance r from the wire, then the uh, Amperian loop that you choose is a circle containing that point. Then along this uh, Amperian loop, you can make this argument. The number one, that B dot DL, this dot product will be just uh, uh, strength of magnetic field times DL. The, your length segments are going along the circle and your magnetic field is also going along the circle. 
And the second argument uh, you can make is B constant along circle. With those two arguments, you can simplify this uh, expression for the integral here. Um, so B dot DL becomes just this. And B, since B is constant, you can pull it out of the integral. So you can say B times uh, the line integral of DL is equal to that. In all the applications of Ampere's law and Gauss's law, you pretend that you are going to do the integral and you avoid doing it. You find a way to not do it. And this is pretty easy. It's just the circumference of circle, 2 pi r. So that's equal to, uh, let me use this version here, uh, 4 pi ke over c squared times the current enclosed. And current enclosed, um, it's enclosed uh, if a current is going through this surface that's uh, bounded by the Amperian loop. So, you know, there's this one current here. It's not all that confusing. So let me just call that I. Uh, it gets more confusing when there are multiple loops or whatever. We'll deal with that later. This is simple. We'll just keep it simple. So, um, so we have this equation. Let me just write out the cleaned up version. B times 2 pi r is equal to 4 pi ke over c squared i. And uh, normally I would solve for B, but I think it's asking for yeah, current through the long wire. So I'll solve for current. Solving for current, i is equal to, let me cancel out uh, 2 pi with that to get 2. So i is equal to um, b times r, or c squared, times b times r, divided by 2ke. OK, let me put that into from alpha and see what I get. Uh, speed of light. I probably could have put c, but I'm spelling it out just in case uh, I confuse it. 5 micro tesla times r 70 centimeters uh, divided by 2 times uh, Coulomb constant. And um, hopefully it'll give it to me in correct units, amperes, good. 17.5, um, that feels right, let's see. Uh, is that, yeah, 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 I guess. So uh, that's a really large amount of current, but it's a single wire, and that's a long distance. So I think that's right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm used to generating magnetic fields with the solenoids and, you know, um, the, the Hamilton coil with hundreds of turns. So my number sense for magnetic field and current isn't quite um, um, aligned, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, uh, using Ampere's law, it, it, uh, it's really quick. Um, and I really do recommend that you learn how to apply Gauss's law and Ampere's law. It's uh, the kind of technique that once you get the hang of it, it really cuts out a lot of uh, otherwise really complicated work.